Hello audience. Welcome to the ESD Essentials, which will cover the fundamentals of electrostatic discharge protection. This video provides a basic introduction to electrostatic discharge, or ESD for short, and presents a high-level explanation of how to protect system circuitry against ESD. We will cover several parameters that need to be considered when selecting ESD protection, starting with the ESD working voltage, or reverse standoff voltage. This will be followed by a video covering the IEC 61042 standard. So what is electrostatic discharge? All objects can accumulate electric charge by coming into contact with other objects. When this positively charged object comes into close proximity with a conductor, electrons will transfer suddenly from the conductor to the positively charged object. This sudden transfer is known as electrostatic discharge. Typically SD events can discharge thousands of volts of electricity, which can be damaging to sensitive semiconductors and integrated circuits. ESD can be introduced to a system circuitry through interface connectors that are exposed to the outside world. When charged objects, such as humans, come into close contact with interface connectors, ESD current can be discharged onto the PCB traces, which could damage and destroy important system circuitry. To prevent damage to a system, ESD protection diodes can be placed close to the interface connector. As a result, when the ESD is discharged onto the traces, the ESD protection diode will steer the current to ground and protect the circuitry behind it. Choosing the most appropriate suppressor technology requires a balance between equipment protection needs and operating requirements, taking into account the anticipated threat level. Let's have a look options available for ESD protections. A clamp device begins conducting when its threshold voltage is exceeded, then restores to the non-conducting mode when voltage drops below threshold level. Voltage spikes are clipped off to safe levels by clamp devices. X, TVS diode and MO versus Crowbar devices conduct when threshold voltages are exceeded and then trigger to an on state voltage drop or only a few volts, hence the name crowbar. These devices restore to non conduction when the driving voltage and or current is reduced with the passing of the transient. Let's see difference between MOV and TVS diode. MOVs are most often used on the power mains to protect downstream electronics and electrical equipment from direct and nearby lightning hits. Silicon TVS diodes are used extensively for protection across more sensitive data lines on telecommunication and microprocessor-based monitoring systems. Now we will discuss about How to select transient voltage suppressors, TVS diode Transient voltage suppressors TVS, are clamping devices that limit voltage spikes by low impedance avalanche breakdown of a rugged silicon PN junction. They are used to protect sensitive components from electrical overstress. When a transient appears in the circuit, the TVS becomes active, clamping it to a harmless level. The symbol and characteristics of the TVS diode its electrical parameters such as breakdown voltage, VBR, leakage current, ID, and capacitance should be invisible to the circuit and have no effect on performance. The reverse standoff voltage, VWM, which approximates the circuit operating voltage, is normally 10% below breakdown voltage. This assures minimal standby leakage current. The TVS clamps instantly when transients occur, limiting the spike voltage to a safe level while diverting damaging currents away from the protected part. Most devices are specified with a 10 one thousandths of a microsecond surge waveform, that is 10 microseconds rise to peak and 1000 microseconds exponential decay to one half peak. TVS families are normally specified in KW of peak pulse power. PPP. Power rating is derived from the product of peak pulse current, IPP, and the clamping voltage, 
VC. TVS diodes are available for operating voltages ranging from 5 volts through 376 volts. Operation TVS diode is primarily intended to serve as a shunt voltage clamp across sensitive components in the circuit to prevent high voltage transients from damaging them. Until these transients occur, the TVS diode will be idling at very low standby current levels and appear transparent to the circuit. When a high voltage transient does occur, the device clamps the voltage by avalanche breakdown. Definitions, or, Terminology of TVS Diodes Reverse Standoff Voltage, VRWM This is the normal DC operating voltage of the device. At this point, the device will appear as high impedance to the protected circuit. It is also known as working voltage. Devices are available ranging from 2.8 volts to 440 volts. Reverse Breakdown Voltage, VBR this is the point where the device begins to conduct in avalanche mode and becomes a low impedance path for the transient. Breakdown voltage is measured at a test current, IT, typically 1 mA or 10 mA. This is important parameter we have to consider in data sheets for selecting the TVS diode. Peak pulse current, IPP. This is maximum permissible surge current which the device can withstand without damage. TVS diode data sheets specify a peak pulse capability for a particular transient waveform. Mostly diodes are rated using 8 twentieths of a microsecond or 10 one thousandths of a microsecond impulse waveform. Clamping voltage, VC. It is the maximum voltage drop across the TVS diode for a particular peak pulse current. When using TVS diodes, the most important parameters are identified as Rated working peak voltage or rated standoff voltage, VWM Peak pulse power dissipation, PPP Peak impulse current, IPP Clamping voltage, VC Steps to be followed while selecting TVS diode The first step in selecting a TVS diode is to determine what highest continuous peak normal operating voltage will be at the point of intended protection in the circuit. This should include continuous DC or repetitive AC peak voltages such as sinusoidal peaks intended for normal operation. This highest operating voltage will then determine the rated standoff voltage, VWM, selection of the TVS component. This is also identified as the rated working peak voltage for the selected TVS diode. The next higher voltage characterized for TVS diode is the breakdown voltage VBR. It is typically 10 to 15% above VWM and is the voltage that TVS devices go into avalanche similar to a Zener diode. The highest voltage parameter specified for a TVS diode is VC or clamping voltage under high current pulse conditions. It is typically 35 to 40% higher than VBR, or 60% higher than VWM and represents the maximum clamping voltage during the specified peak impulse current IPP. The process of selecting a suitable transient suppressor device. The maximum operating voltage that you have determined will then be used in establishing the suitable rated standoff voltage selection when choosing the TVS diode. Next, you will need to choose the TVS component by establishing the breakdown voltage of the device. This voltage should be at least 10 to 15% higher than the rated standoff voltage. Lastly, you will need to choose the TVS component by establishing the maximum clamping voltage of the devices when subjected to high voltage pulse and pulse conditions. In normal circumstances, the most suitable clamping voltage should be about 35 to 30 percent higher than the maximum breakdown voltage or at least 60 percent higher than the rated standoff voltage. Ideally, this will be your maximum clamping voltage that will trigger the conducting mode of the diode when a specified peak impulse current is reached, hence, 
prevent the overvoltage from damaging the electric circuit. We Croydon Services Private Limited, providing design and consultancy solutions for ESD Essentials Protection. Thank you for watching.